Hey everyone, my name is Rolf, I'm part of the product management team at uh, Silver Peak, and I'm going to be talking about our launch today of uh, Unity Edge Connect. So when you think about software defined networking and SD-WAN, it's product, but it's also a go-to-market. There's sort of a business model change that happens at the same time. So in terms of the product, we have virtual and physical endpoints. Think of those as the data plane. So we support all hypervisors. We have uh, AWS versions that run up to five gigabits per second. So very high throughput in cloud. And uh, today we typically deployed about 50-50 with, with, with each one of these in terms of the, the, the POCs. Physical footprint means an appliance. It's, it's a box. Now that box, we want it to be as stateless as possible. And the reason we want the state to be extracted is that we are going to come up with policies and profiles so you can manage these devices from a single point. And it doesn't matter if you decide that you need more bandwidth in a certain, in a certain location. You can upgrade the box. There's no local configuration. You don't have to go into the CLI and config the box. Basically, you know, this is sort of the, the hardware menu, and you'll choose the shoe that best fits. And so, small branch, typically we have um, appliances that go on a desktop, so the noise footprint is something that people care about. Power is something that people care about. And so we essentially have models that start at 200 megabits per second, and then go up to 10 gigabits per second which are rack mounts, redundancy in terms of power supplies, redundancy in terms of uh, um, uh, solid cell storage. So essentially enterprise class appliances at, at the high end. The speeds and feeds do not impact any of the business intent policies that you set. So that's very important. So again, make the device stateless. Go to market. So this is a big change for um, most of the way that appliances are deployed today. You will have a network, a fabric, that consists of N of these physical devices. The physical device does not do anything until you attach a piece of software to it. So we have a base offering, which gives you all of the software-defined WAN capabilities in terms of dynamic path control, application visibility, all the way into uh, internet statistics. And then we also have the ability to essentially unlock, so unlock the bandwidth capability of the appliance. So the base license will go up to 200 megabits per second because that is the sweet spot for a small branch and we want to make the entry point as, as accessible as possible. If you want to unlock the device, you don't need to go touch it. You basically will buy a number of base licenses and you will say for each given site, I want to take the restrictor plate off of this device. So all from the central point of management, very simple, very simple model. At a fabric-wide level, we also have a boost license, which is essentially the WAN optimization software capabilities. So it's for its uh, deduplication, right? its compression, it's all of the uh, optimizations that people know from Silver Peak's NX uh, product line. And then we also have the SaaS optimization capability, and I'll, I'll show some details about how that works, and, and David's alluded to some of that as well. Are these, these are a la carte uh, offerings? Very, very good question. So it, it is, it, it, it's a bit of a stack to this point, right? So every, every box needs a base. Now you can buy more boxes than you have base licenses because maybe you want to have some spares and you don't want to pay a lot for that, for that spare box. To turn it on, you need base. To unlock the 200 megabit and up, Throughput, you will need to attach the plus license, and then boost and SAS are entirely a la carte. Can I move base licenses around among hardware? You can absolutely move the base license around. It's just within a fabric, if you own 10 base licenses, 10 of your endpoints are going to be active and, and managed as part of that, that, of that fabric by the orchestrator. But you can absolutely buy boxes and, and, and never buy licenses. What's the recurrent pricing? Are some of them subscription pricing? Uh, so essentially, we're looking at, um, uh, we have one year, three year, and we're looking at five year and seven year license as well. So today, one year and three year, and we're looking to expand that to five That's and good, seven. Because one of my biggest pain points is going to the purchasing department every year. Yes. And I waste weeks every year going yes. back for another purchase order. So a five year purchase order is actually very practical. Very good. Very good. Uh, and we also have Should be cheaper though, of course, because we're giving you all that money up front. Yes, and, 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 in, and in fact, that is, there is a... Uh, uh, there is an NPV calculation. And also, in terms of having a network of uh, many uh, 
numbers of nodes and then you want to add some nodes to that and you don't want to track each one individually in terms of when it expires, there's an uh, option to co-term. So it make, makes, makes it very simple, right? Uh, both from a Salesforce point of view as well as from a management point of view. But then the, the base license costs as well, right? So it's not... The base license is not free, that is correct. That is correct. So the intent of the base license is to be able to uh, separate software features from the hardware and essentially be able to make the hardware at a very low, uh, uh, at a much lower entry point. Uh, so um, zero touch provisioning. We now have the capability to bring up a branch with internet only uh, access. So at ONOG, we have the capability of doing MPLS provisioning. With this, we can have dual uplinks, internet uplinks from the branch, and you can essentially do zero touch provisioning without an MPLS network. So that's what we call the enhanced zero touch provisioning within the Edge Connect family. The way it works is the new device is plugged in, reaches out via DHCP request, Right. It reaches a well-known uh, uh, location via uh, DNS in our cloud intelligence portal. So that's sort of the must-have feature of the cloud intelligence portal is we need to have a space that we, a place that we can reach. At that point, we will... Is it, is it looking for something silverpeak.com or is it looking for something of the, of the DNS that I gave it via DHCP? No, it's essentially looking for uh, for something silverpeak.com. It's essentially oh, 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 no, or silver we're peak, silver peak systems. We're dialing home to you then. You're dialing home to us. Exa exactly right. Yes. Now, what you're sending in that in, in that dial up is essentially a serial number if it's a physical appliance, or a key which is part of the OVA that we would deliver to you when you download the virtual machine. And by the way, the virtual machine. So back to the question about the base. Uh, having a cost associated with it, virtual machines are free. So the virtual machine, if you don't want the physical piece, you take the virtual machine and you drop down the base license on, uh, onto it. So literally your, your pricing is entirely independent of the, phys of, of the substrate that you choose to use. So with the virtual, the actual OVA is free, you just buy the license and it's enabled. Correct. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Now this portal, based on the serial number or the key, will find the customer's uh, GMS. The customer's GMS could be in the cloud, it could be on-prem. GMS? No, oh, sorry, the GMS is the orchestrator, so the, the, um, the Unity orchestrator. So um, it will find the management portal. The management portal, this was for first discovery. Once that has happened, the, the orchestrator creates a management plane, a tunnel along all of the WAN paths whereby it can reach the Edge Connect appliance. And so now you have an IPsec secured management plane, which scales very well because now this is from your orchestrator to your Edge Connect. It is not via the cloud, the, the, the cloud intelligence, intelligence some portal. Signature certificate, something in here that. Yes. We know that it's the box we think it is when it dials home? Yes, yes. So when you, uh, you also have an email that gets generated, so you can actually acknowledge the key to know that that is, that is the box that you expected. But you will only ever see a box that matches the key or your serial number come into your email in terms of, of accepting it or not. But you do have the opportunity to essentially say ignore, ignore this one, it's not right. The other key piece to make provisioning stateless is we suck out all the configuration of the interfaces of an Edge Connect device into a service profile. So you can have a standard format for your branch which says this is the LAN ports that I will support on that branch. I will support guest Wi-Fi. I will support a certain number of applications. I want a certain VLAN to be associated with that port. And this is the uplinks that I have available. When you provision the Edge Connect new device, you will roll out that profile. You can change some of the uh, screenshot. You can change some of the, the labeling on the way, so you can customize for a specific Edge Connect device if one of the branch is a snowflake and is a little bit different. But the model really is you don't want snowflake branches anymore because that's, you know, that's configuration drift and it's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attack surface. 
So you can customize, you apply the profile. Now your device is provisioned at the branch exactly and consistently with what you have defined. The other very uh, big feature with uh, Unity Edge Connect is what we call the business intent overlays. And it's essentially, if you're familiar with overlays or virtual networking from the data center side, it leverages some of the same constructs. The primary one is that you're independent from the brand and physical routing attributes of the underlay. So the underlay, the physical network will get a packet from point A to point B. It does that most efficiently by looking at a next hop, by figuring out its adjacencies. The distributed protocols work very well on a box by box basis to make that happen. But at the logical level, you don't want to necessarily have the same topology. So you can choose a different topology for each one of these applications. And you can also choose a policy in terms of does uh, an application need to go through a central firewall? Or in David's YouTube uh, example, is this something we want to get out to the internet as quickly as possible? The uh, idea is really to follow what compute virtualization has shown us in terms of not just consolidating VMs on a hypervisor, but the value, the business value of being able to now have the center, the vSphere center of management and being able to manage devices in a scale out uh, manner um, as efficiently as possible. So this is what the UI looks like. Um, essentially what you would, um, what you would configure is what are my access policies to my logical network, right? Which application at the branch is mapped into each one of these slices? What is the service that a virtual network is able to use? So for some applications, you may not want to use your WAN optimization bandwidth, which you've provisioned sort of the fixed number of gigabits per second. For others, you can. So it essentially allows each one of these logical networks to be independent from a topology point of view, from an underlay point of view, from a security management and QS queues point of view, as well as the uh, SAS optimization and one optimization additional capabilities. We see that this is really the only way that you can scale out to hunt to you know hundreds of, of, of branches. We have customers today that are doing uh, 70 uh, retail branches, you can't keep track of the configurations at that scale. The visibility is uh, essentially a standard feature. So this comes with the base license and it will allow you to drill into the black hole that web applications have created because now you need to actually go in and understand at the layer seven uh, uh, a layer seven, you know, is it Office 365, is it Facebook, et cetera. So this is an example of, of one of these screens. So we sort of classify from a top, top talker's point of view, um, all these different applications. You will see for SaaS applications, the, the, the geo that, uh, that, that is being accessed. And so you will know, maybe I need to roll out a Un Edge Connect in my Amazon web services east location because I have a lot of traffic that drops out in that location. The, the shades of blue in those bar graphs, is that the compression? This is essentially, you're, you're right, so essentially it's it's the, the, the amount of bytes and the reduction that, that, that comes out of it. Uh, uh, so, you know, just a lot of analytics. I think one of the main use cases we've seen in SDN, whether it's WAN or data center, is the ability to gather this rich data expose it through an API and have somebody be able to do a higher level intelligent processing on it. So all of this data, it's shown here in our UI, but the raw data is available through our REST API. Yes, so it's two purposes actually. One is it allows the human um, analytics engine to add value. But the second one is it actually justifies it because all the charts actually allow you to say, we did this and this is the improvement in performance. Yes. It becomes budgetary justification in the post, if you do post budget reports. Very good. Um, this whole visibility and analytics piece is key, I think. Very good. Thank you. Uh, SaaS optimization. So I'll, I'll um, maybe just walk, walk you through this. 
when you have an edge, a Unity fabric, you will have a number of nodes which are sort of gateways to uh, leave that business intent overlay. So in this case, we have Omaha, we have uh, Virginia, we have, we have Chandler. Each one of these gateways can reach the SaaS applications at the top, right? Salesforce, Box, et cetera, what okay. We constantly measure the path, one, the reachability, but two, the round trip delay to each one of these, these sites. And for each application, we determine which one is the best gateway. So that when, an, when one overlay is looking to reach a specific application, we will set up the tunnels in such a way that we guide it in real time directly from the Edge Connect. So this is without the orchestrator. So essentially the Edge Connect itself, even if the orchestrator was offline, will find the best exit point to that SaaS application. Why would I go from the, from the client across probably the internet to a gateway and then to the SaaS provider? Uh, so generally, a lot of uh, a lot of customers are building sort of a, a hub and spoke, but it's 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 many it's n hubs, right? Sort of regional hubs, and so for a very simple branch, if you want to only deploy the Edge Connect appliance, and you don't even have a router, you don't even have anything else, you want to bring the traffic. Every packet you want to make sure leaves through an IPsec tunnel, and goes to one of the hubs from which point it, w it, w it will go out. So that way we essentially avoid any sort of local leakage at the branch and the ability for somebody to set a bypass, a bypass route. Because you've got four internet connections, you can use all four, yes. right? So that's, that's what the first goal here is. I've got three internet connections, Omaha, AWS, East, and Chandler, and I will use all of them to send the data out. And I'll pick the one which but has the best. You don't have internet in Denver too? Right. Probably, use those too. You could. You, you could make it. So there's nothing stopping you from having each one of your locations be, be a gateway, right? So that's, that's the, the YouTube example. You have, you but some have, of the overlays and, and, you know, probably... You might only have proxy servers or logging engines or something in those three locations. Yes, it's, right. okay. it's not a foregone conclusion, though. It's if I want to filter map on traffic, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is that can decide where to do it. Most enterprises today have a best and only path to the Internet. You might have a half a dozen Internet connections in your data center, but you can only use one of them to go out of. Yeah. Right, because or you hit the BGP peering points and then you have BGP load, but ultimately there's only one data center has the default route. But you've wasted tens of thousands of dollars of 10 gigabit bandwidth in all your data centers to the internet connections that you're not using. Now you're load balancing all of the available bandwidth. Or using the best one. Well, that's a form of load balancing, right? Yes. Is it not? It, 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 no, absolutely. You might want to put an algorithm okay. in that says do one third on each, you know, split equally. But why would you do that? You'd route by the best path by choice. Yes, so we'll actually talk uh, uh, about the, some uh, new load, ba load balancing as well in, in just a minute. We've got to get away from this routing idea that there's only one way, best and only path. Right? Because when you use OSPF or BGP, you can only select one route, one interface, one. Yep. Yep. Okay, so this is, this is more for sort of debugging purposes, but you know, this is kind of the, 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 the screen or the analytics that would be the output from the SaaS optimization engine for each of the services. And I, the list is a lot longer. It's about 8,000. This was taken off of our, 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 own, uh, our, uh, our own, own SD1 fabric. But essentially, it will give you a reachability assessment as well as a real-time measurement of the round-trip delay. And so that's kind of the data that then feeds into uh, piping up the overlays to go to these different places. Okay, so I think with, with that, I will, I will stop here. I think David is going to take you through um, what we call our new bonded tunnels. So it's a packet-based uh, dynamic path control. So it's essentially um, an extension to the dynamic, the DBC feature that we've had up until Edge Connect.